<laughs> Welcome to a very special Christmas edition of the Dog Rescuers. See you in a bit, boys. I'm in southwest London at one of the country's busiest animal hospitals to see for myself how the wonderful staff here are keeping our four-legged friends fit and healthy during the festive period. We're about to meet some of the poorly pooches currently at the hospital and hopefully help some of them get back on their feet and home in time for Christmas. Trapped in where? Some ice. Yes, it's ice. And we'll be travelling across the country to see inspectors carrying out daring rescues. Do you know what's a dog called? Harvey. <gasps> Shall I grab your beautiful? Come on then. Oh, my smell. Come on, girl. And meeting dogs in need of a Christmas miracle. Well, I haven't seen anything like this in nine years. Months and months and months and years of neglect. And I've got the fantastic job of playing surprise Santa for some of the bravest, kindest and most deserving dogs and their owners we've been lucky enough to meet. Got some stuff for the dog and then some stuff for you as well. Some treats. Not one of them. Oh, make your teeth nice, I will. He's my soulmate. It's never ending. It's eternal. Christmas may be a magical time of year, but for the people keeping our dogs safe from harm, it can be a very challenging season too. Around the country, as temperatures dip, the freezing conditions create new dangers which can test even the most prepared of dog rescuers. In Ashington, Northumberland, Inspector Jackie Miller received an alarming call. Hello. Hello, Jackie. It's Michaela calling in in relation to an emergency rescue of a dog trapped in some ice. Trapped in where? Some ice. Yes, it's ice. Fire and rescue are on route and they're requesting our assistance. Right, OK. I'm coming. Thank Jeez, you, Jackie. Bye. We had really, really bad weather up here. At some point, it, it got to minus six, um, although things appear to have thawed out today. I've never been called that to a dog and some ice, ever. I've been called to a swan and some ice. I've got no other swift water team on today either, which means it will be me and the fire brigade. It needs to be dealt with ASAP. If we get an emergency call from the police or the fire brigade, I want to be there as fast as I can. You know, you've got to be thinking, how bad is the animal? Is it really an emergency situation? Am I not going to need any of my colleagues to come and help me? You never know what exactly it's going to be until you get there. 99.9% of the time, a different situation to what you've done previously. As she approaches, Jackie spots fire and rescue already on the scene. Oh, they're down there. There's people right on the bank. Good job I've got my thermal on. As soon as Jackie spots the dog, her worst fears are confirmed. What's the dog called? Harvey. Poor Hardy is neck deep in freezing water and trapped in the fragile ice. Hardy was out with his dog walker, Pat, when he strayed onto the ice. All she can do is watch nervously and hope she doesn't have to give his owner bad news. He normally goes to go swim in the river and he just went down and I didn't see it, but he must have gone through the ice or went off the edge and he hasn't been able to get back out again. And it's been about an hour now, I would think, that he's been in. Submerged in the ice-cold water for an hour, Hardy's body temperature is at risk of dropping dangerously low. If it continues to fall, the stranded Labrador could develop hypothermia, which can be fatal. As the animal expert, it's Jackie's responsibility to rescue the desperate dog. With no time to waste, she gets kitted up. When you get on the ice, um, don't walk on it. And you just spread out in a big starfish. There's a lot to think about when you've got a dog stuck in icy cold water. No twists? Yeah, you're fine. The cold is going to have an effect. 
it could cause hypothermia, just as it could with us as well, if we were stuck in the water for a period of time. Can I just have a look first? Good boy, Harvey. What is that? And it's not just Hardy whose life might be in danger. You're just going to make sure that you can protect yourself before you go into and put yourself into a dangerous situation. What's the situation, what you're thinking? Is your team leader happy for me to do this on my own? Yeah, yeah. Well, if you want me to starfish... Yeah. All right? We'll uh, constantly keep you tethered and we've got your downstream back up. Put this out in front of you as far as you can reach. Yeah. Let the spike go into the ice and then you just pull yourself along and you'll scoosh towards the dog. OK. At this stage in time, if you kind of get the dog out, yeah. just stabilise the situation by hanging on to the dog. Inch by inch, Jackie edges out onto the thin layer of ice. In Northumberland, Hardy the Labrador has been submerged in freezing waters for over an hour. Good boy, Harvey. Inspector Jackie Miller is desperately trying to reach him before he's overcome by the cold or loses his grip. But this is an extremely dangerous situation for her too. If you lie on your stomach... That's it, and then just pull towards you. That's it. When you get closer to the dog, obviously, it's going to be a, a bit more fragile. So just take it easy. I think, as an inspector, <laughs> you do a lot of things a lot of people wouldn't do. You put yourselves in a lot of situations. Some nerves are good, but you just need to keep a handle of them. Think clearly. Um, think through what you need to do and what the end result needs to be. Good boy, Harvey! Good boy! Every inch Jackie takes towards Hardy, the ice gets thinner and the risk of falling through gets greater. Good boy! Yeah. Whoever's at the top, can you get blankets and stuff out my fur, please? Yeah, we will do. Yeah. Good boy, Harvey! Just as Hardy is within reach, the ice breaks and Hardy starts to panic. Come on, keep going. Oh, oh. Keep going. With Hardy exhausted, it's up to Jackie to get him out and stop him from slipping under the ice. Pull up back in. Yeah. Oh. Right, let her float oh. in the water. Oh. Come on, Hardy. Come on. There you go, she's got it there, excellent. Come on, good boy, good boy. After spending over an hour in the freezing water, Hardy is finally out. And judging by that wagging tail, I'd say he's pretty happy about it. And so is dog walker Pat. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free, no subscription required. Download Veely now. Fantastic, I'll put it in the words. From getting here to getting him out was about 10 minutes, maybe. Like, to just go out on the ice like that, very brave, very brave. Tremendous. Couldn't agree more. And despite her icy dip, Jackie's mind is still on the dog she's rescued. Thank you so much. Oh. Hello, Sonna. And I dropped your lead in the water, I'm sorry. Oh, you silly boy. Let's have a look, because you had a cut on your foot. Really? Yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah, She's got time for a tiny little pick. You silly bully, you don't go for a bully. Oh. Thanks, everybody. Oh, it's all right. Am I allowed to go and just try and get him home and warmed up? Just make sure he's all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've got any concerns about him later, yeah. you could just get him a vet yeah. check just to check that there's no yeah. problems with the, yeah. the body Thank temperature, you so all right? Thank you. Good lad. Good lad. Yeah. Obviously, he, he must be a dog that goes swimming in the river usually when he goes on his dog walk. I'm not quite sure he's going to be doing that too often, or he might be having a different walking route. 
All right, so I know you're cold, I know. Have some sausage. It's called Hardy, not Harvey, but I don't think he really cared as long as I was coming for him. There you are, son. There you are. Is that good lad? Hardy by name, Hardy by nature. If he'd been in there a lot longer, it could have got to the point where his body temperature had reduced dramatically. Not being able to get onto the side, he would have got exhausted. It could have been an, an, a nasty ending. But he, he thankfully held on for that hour. What a hair-raising rescue. Nice work, Jackie. But Hardy will need to get home and warmed up quickly to make sure he doesn't suffer any lasting damage from his freezing ordeal. We'll catch up with him later. Whilst many of us wind down as the new year approaches, for the staff at Putney Animal Hospital, the festive period can be a busy season when it comes to treating our sick and injured hounds. Today, I've been given the chance to join vet Michael Lazarus on his rounds to experience a day in his life in the run-up to Christmas. Just this way. First up, we're meeting a few of the four-legged patients. Who have we got in today? Uh, a few things. Um, yes, uh, they all seem to be wearing cones. This guy over here, Dexter, he has just been castrated, um, so he is a bit groggy. Um, yeah. So I think we'll just uh, let him have some, have some yes, quiet time and uh, <laughs> rest up. Got a lot to think about. Yeah. This is Trigger. He actually came to us um, a few months ago with a fractured leg. One of our vets, Laura, she put a plate across the fracture, but he's been really naughty, and he always somehow manages to get his bandage off, which is why we've got this cone on. And, uh, yeah, he's healing well. Good for you, Trigger. Yeah. These two are well on the way to recovery. But some dogs here still have a way to go. This lovely girl over here, this is Bo. She's had quite a lot of trouble urinating and she's had some blood in the urine as well. So what we're going to do today is do some imaging of her bladder and see what the problem could be. Now, Dalmatians actually have a very characteristic problem whereby they form special stones in their bladder, and that's a genetic disorder that's been passed down generation to generation. But if she does have any big stones in her, then we might need to remove those surgically. Could just be maybe a simple cystitis, but you never know, it could be something more sinister, so we really have to try and get a diagnosis on this before we can rehome her. But hopefully she'll leave today with a good prognosis. Let's hope so. Michael's hopeful that the stones can be spotted with a simple ultrasound, so we're going to scan Bo's bladder. I just need some gel. <laughs> OK, so... I basically stuck the probe on her abdomen, just the back there. And what you can see, if I just get a good view, that big black space there, that's her bladder. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's big, big, big. She's got a lot of urine in there. Uh -oh. And then I go down to the neck of the bladder over there. How can you tell it's full of urine? So basically, any um, liquid on ultrasound comes up as black. Right. What I'm doing as I move along is I'm looking for any shadows in the ultron scan or any stones that I can see. And if you can see, sometimes when I move that along, there's a bit of white shadowing okay. in the middle of the black bit. So we don't know what that is. That shouldn't be there. It shouldn't be there. It could be a stone, or it could be something more ominous. The certain type of stone that we're looking at, they don't always come up that easily. Uh -huh. um, so that's why whenever you're unsure, you should try and do a contrast x-ray. Is if she's got just a normal cystitis, it could be a bit of a blood clot. So hopefully it's just something simple like that. But because she is a bit of an older girl, we want to rule out other things. Obviously, you have to think of types of bladder cancer as well. Um, so we want to make sure that she definitely doesn't have something like that before we rehome her. So, next step, x-ray for Bo. Yeah. Let's just hope it's good news for Bo and she's not heading for a distinctly unmerry Christmas.
Across the series, we've met a lot of incredible dogs and inspiring owners who don't often get the thanks they deserve Darling. for the work they do and the joy and comfort they've brought. So, as it's Christmas, I'm going to spread a little bit of festive cheer and play Santa Claus. Or should that be Santa Paws? I've hitched a ride with animal collection officer and head elf, Joe White, who's going to help with some present delivery. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hey! Oh, what bad is to ride on a one-horse up and slay? Hey! We're jingling all the way to see an inspector who really embodies the spirit of Christmas. Every winter, Charlotte Melvin hits the streets around the country to hand out some essential goodies to the homeless and their canine companions. They've got some stuff for the dog and then some stuff for you as well. Christmas is This time of year is really hard for anybody who's sleeping rough. It's absolutely freezing. What's she called? Izzy. How long have you had her for? Uh, I've had her three and a half years. I rescued her when she was six months old. Oh, you've had her a long time then? Yeah. This is the third year we've been running the project for now. So we've probably given out 700 bags over the last two years. What do you think? What do you think? We've got some food, so like some tins of food and stuff, some treats, and one of them. Oh, make your teeth nice, like, well. And then there's some socks and a nice a scarf and things to keep you nice and warm. OK. There's a warm blanket in the bottom, so you've got something you can wrap her up in as oh, well. Oh, that's great. She's my best friend. She, she, she's every, everything to me, everything. For me, it's companionship. It's, it's unconditional love. Yeah. They don't judge you as a person, do they? No, they, just, no. they just love you for who you are, no, don't they? No, no matter what. People are really, really grateful. They're really happy that we can make their day a little bit better and their dog's day a little bit better. What Charlotte's doing, giving like, stuff out for the dogs, is amazing. It's lovely. It's really nice. See Thank you later. You. Bye. Please take care. Lovely to meet you. you. I'm meeting Charlotte at RSPCA Millbrook to help with a bit of Christmas stuffing and deliver a cracker of a surprise. With Christmas just around the corner, Charlotte's determined to reach as many rough sleepers and their dogs as possible. Hi, Charlotte. Merry Christmas. Hi. Merry Christmas. <laughs> How are you? I'm all right, thank you. She's already busy packing her next lot of goodie bags to hand out. So what you do is just fantastic. What made you want to do it? Um, I think more than anything, it's when you go to places and you see the extent of how many people there is actually on the streets now. There's so many people, and a lot of them people have got dogs. That dog is that person's life. And to just go and help out and make somebody smile, I think. Um, go and do a little bit of good in the yeah. world. And, you know, people watching at home now, is there any way they could get involved or, you know, help out too? Yes, definitely. Always after donations, um, as you can probably imagine, giving out that many bags. We need a lot of things. Funny you should say that, Charlotte. Joe, my trusty Christmas elf, awaits. Come with me. So I know that you need lots and lots of donations, so we took it upon ourselves to ask loads of businesses and people, anyone who had stuff that would be useful to you. And this is what we were given. Oh, my God! Wow, that's amazing! Is that all for us? Yeah, it's great, isn't it? God, there's so much stuff there. So much stuff. Inundated. Sacks of dry food, wet food, there's toys, treats. And if you think that's a lot, let's have a look around the side. Oh, my God, there's even more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, there's absolutely loads. It's going to make so many dogs happy this Christmas, so thank you so much. No, thank you. you oh, thank you. Too. Whilst we're all winding down for Christmas, sadly dogs like Trigger here are still being abandoned and neglected and left in need of help. In the cold winter months running up to Christmas, a warm fur coat can be a dog's best friend. 
but for long-haired breeds, a lack of grooming can turn their fur into a disabling shackle. On the Wirral, a severely matted Shih Tzu has been signed over to Inspector Anthony Joins after a call from a concerned member of the public. Hey, Molly. Hey, girl. I haven't seen anything like this in nine years. And the back, I just, I just think, look at that. Months and months and months and years of neglect. Such a severe case of matting is a heartbreaking situation for Anthony and potentially life-threatening for Molly here. Come on, girl. Anthony just has to hope that he's got to her in time. Coming up. Just these mats are so tight on her leg. Yeah, I know. Will Molly's coat be too much to handle? I'm just worry what state the dog's in underneath. And I'll find out if Bo the Dalmatian is going to have a happy and healthy Christmas. So there's slightly in increasing tension with each x ray. Yep. Oh, good girl. On the Wirral, Anthony Joins has a serious case on his hands, a Shih Tzu called Molly with the worst matted coat he has ever seen. Hello. Hi. Thanks for seeing us. Vet Holly Jones is on duty to assess the little dog. This is Molly. At the moment, she can barely open her mouth. These I'm mats on that. the face are so tight, going from up by her eye to under her yeah. chin. With such extreme matting, it's a struggle to see where the dog ends and her tangled coat begins. This so. is all what? Yeah. It's disgusting. People shouldn't take on a dog and like this if they're not going to keep it up. When dogs are severely matted, it's very frustrating because that's something that's so easily prevented just by regular grooming. I was trying, I was trying to stroke her, but I wanted to actually feel it. As a result of her unkempt coat, Poor Molly can barely walk. Come on, then. She's, yeah, she's not really putting weight through that leg. She can't move at all. Deeply concerned, Holly takes a closer look at the feet. Just these mats are so tight on her leg. Yeah, I know. And discovers something even more disturbing. Oh, man. So, looking at this front leg, it's the only foot you can actually see. It's, it's... Is that the pad? Yeah, that is the main pad, which is pointing to you at the moment. It should be around here somewhere. It's completely deformed. We need to, we need to get the mats off first yeah. so we can see what's going on underneath. I think the only fair way to do that is to sedate her. Yeah. Shih tzus are meant to be brushed every few days. As Molly potentially hasn't had her coat groomed in five years, it's not going to be an easy task. Vet nurses Joe and Sandra are called in to help. She's a good girl. Here we go, this first piece. But the paws are so twisted from the fur, it's impossible to tell what's mat and what's dog. There's a claw there, there's a claw there, there's a pad there, so I don't know what's in that. I don't want to cut that. No. Molly's fur is so dense, it's even a match for the clippers. He's with it. And you've got a hedge trimmer. Clobbering three blades with little sign of progress. I don't think it's going to work because I'm good enough, do you know what I mean? The difficulty with matted dogs when they're so severe is not knowing what's underneath. Skin problems, deformities limbs dying and potentially dropping off. You have to be very careful that you don't then cut the skin inadvertently and cause more damage. Things are so bad, if Holly and the team can't get through the matted mane without making things worse, they may have to consider putting her to sleep. We get this, off. this is when they're in the middle Holly has one last trick up her sleeve to try and cut through the knotted fur. You can get through with the scissors first, isn't it? You feel the other side. Incredible. It's worry what state the dog's in underneath. Mm -hmm. After
after an hour of shaving and cutting, Holly and Anthony are only just discovering how skin-crawling Molly's problems have become. Oh, please. Yeah. That is a nail. Quite dead, the nail. It's all black and it's got any blood supply along it. Just can't imagine what it's like for this poor, poor dog walking around with these giant flippers. After years of walking on clumps of fur rather than her paws, Molly's nails haven't been worn down and have grown out of control. Three nails there, and then last nail is a monster. That is a foot. And finally, foot number three and four. I mean, the nails alone just show how neglected the dog has been. It's been a long afternoon, and with the dematting almost complete, Anthony has to get back to inspector duty. But little Molly is not out of the woods just yet. I'm worried that basically it's been going on that long, the legs are potentially really badly affected. Is the dog even going to be able to walk? It's going to be probably a sleepless night for me. These bags will probably look worse tomorrow. But I think we've just, we've, we're doing our absolute best, and that, I think that's all you can do. with Animal Collection Officer Joe White. We've already <laughs> had the pleasure of spreading Christmas cheer to one deserving cause, and we're not finished yet. Christmas Day, let's go and run through it with your family growing up, what would it be like? Get up, have to have breakfast before you're out with the presents. You absolutely you can't go near the presents. I'm, with, I'm all over that. Always sitting around waiting for my dad. We're all sitting ready, ready and waiting to go, and he's like just making his tea and pouring out his cornflakes. I think he did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I think he does. Does he still do it, that, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad, Dad, <laughs> hurry up. <laughs> We're on our way to visit a young man and his dog, who touched all our hearts when we first met them three years ago. Hatchie was found at Spitfields Railway Yard. He was hit by a train, which shattered his rear left hock and um, pretty much you know, severed his tail. I think they were very, very surprised that he actually made it 48 hours. Um, from our understanding that the wounds and the injuries were that severe. As a result of his injuries, Hatchie lost his tail and also a back leg. But after such awful suffering, he did gain a new life when he was rescued by Owen Hopkins and family. Hatchie! I'm Owen Hawkins, nine year old. I have short shell tail syndrome, one of the rare, it's a rare condition, and there's about, we know about 30 or 40 in the world who has it. Schwartz Jampal syndrome is a genetic disorder which means Owen's muscles can never relax. The condition badly affected his confidence. Owen would, he always likes to wear a cap. So which he'd then pull down over his face or his hood would be right up over his head, just to try and avoid eye contact with people. But after Owen met Hatchie, everyone noticed an immediate difference in them both, including stepmum Colleen. Will was holding Owen up because he couldn't sit upright on his own. And Hatchie went from being a boisterous big lump of a puppy to suddenly being very quiet and still and calm. My dad brought Hatch into my room and he put his head on my lap. And I went, hello Hatch, hello Hatchy. I loved him straight away from the beginning. Come on, let's go for Owen and Hatchy's relationship has gone from strength to strength. Good boy. Hatchy will always be my best friend. Hatchie is the bestest friend I've actually got. Ever. Ever. A dog is for life, not just for Christmas. Spoken like a true dog rescuer. I imagine this terrific twosome will be having a Christmas to remember. I am looking forward to Christmas with Hatchie. Loads of cuddles. Hatchie using his giant 
poor to open up his presents. Joe and I are about to surprise Owen and Hatchie to find out what Owen and his three-legged friend have been up to since the last time we saw them. Hello, Will. Hello. How are you? Oh, Merry Christmas. Hello. Hey, Owen. Hello. Hey, Hatchie. So when we first saw you, you know, you were young and Hatchie came into your life and it's, it's like you're growing up together and you're now this young man with so much confidence. Yeah. He's my soulmate. It's like, it's never ending. It's eternal. You come as a pair now. Mm, yes. So let's find out a bit more about you, Owen. What do you like getting up to these days? I like playing with Hatchy, tennis, wheelchair tennis on Friday afternoons. I really do like theme parks. They're really fun. Owen and Hatchie's story touched so many hearts when we first saw them, and they've been such a support to each other. We wanted to give these two friends a well-deserved gift. So this one's for Hatchie. It's a big bag oh. of toys and treats for him. Look, he's realised he's had the rustle in the packet. A bag full of treats. That'll keep him occupied for Christmas. Yes. Yes, it will. <laughs> but Hatchie's not the only one we want to give something to you. We want to give something to you too, Owen. Thank you. No worries. Thank you so much. You and your family can go to about 32 amusements and attractions up and down the country. Free entry. Thank you. No worries. Honestly, thank you very much. Well, we both hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you. You too. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. It's been a real honour to meet two such kind and deserving souls and bring a little bit of Christmas spirit with us just for them. Earlier, Vet Michael and I met Dalmatian Bo, in with suspected bladder stones. How long does it take for her to go to sleep? Um, usually about a minute or two. After an inconclusive ultrasound, we're heading to X-ray to investigate further. We're going in the X-ray room. What we actually need to do now is empty her bladder, so get all of that urine out. Mm -hmm. He really needed a wee. Yeah. And then once her bladder's empty, we inject the contrast. Mm -hmm. So this is a clear bottle of fluid, but when you take an X-ray of this, it shows up as bright white. But that's why if there are any stones or any masses in the bladder, it will show an outline of those right. masses. Now we're just injecting that contrast into the bladder. Great, so that's in place. OK. If you can just grab her back end, I'm going to slide this under. One, two, three. Brilliant. Gonna get out before I get turned into Dr. Bruce Banner. Damn, if you can grab those lights. There's a lot of talk going on. If I can hide the stuff. What do you need to pump? Right, okay, um, so what we'll do, I just need to get the details put into that. Are you okay to hold this for a okay. second? Be careful, because there's some pee on there. <laughs> Pop it in there, and I'll just push it in. Okay, ready. If this is a picture of me, I've done it wrong. <laughs> there's our x-ray. So you can see this is the catheter coming through here. That's filling the bladder. And then we can see this is the contrast pooling in the middle of the bladder. You can't see any stones pooling in the middle of the contrast, which is great. But it's not all positive news for Bo. So it's not really conclusive here. So you can see how this contrast goes around, but then suddenly it it diverts that way and then goes back round again. Right. Because if it doesn't fill this space, then we might think that there's a, a mass or something there, exactly. So what's our next step then for Bo? So what do you so do? So the next step for Bo, what we're going to do is take that contrast out, flush in more air, do a final X-ray, because if this is something, it's going to be something bad and we definitely don't want that for her. Mm -hmm. So we want to be 100% sure. 
that. So we've got the contrast out, and then we're just gonna inject some air back into there. Try and fill the bladder like a balloon, basically, so we can get a really good image. One, two, three. With an empty bladder full of air, the result of this X-ray should be the most conclusive yet. Right. Fingers crossed. There we go. So hopefully this is the one. Gives us what we need to know. So it's slightly in increasing tension with each X-ray. Yep. There's no irregularities in the wall. So that is really good news for Bo. We don't have to worry about any masses or stones in her bladder. So no big operations? No, we've got the, the all clear now. So the next thing is just making sure we can find a nice home for Bo before yeah. Christmas. Yeah. What we'll do now is we'll, we'll send away that urine for a, for a test, mm -hmm. see if there is bacterial infection but she will also go on a, a special diet to help prevent any crystals forming in her urine. Bo's problems seem to be typical of her breed, but with a good diet, they can be managed. Oh, Michael, thank you so much for sharing me all that and for allowing me to be in the way. You did a great job. I mean, if you, ever, me. if you ever need to come volunteer, I mean, we can use your help. So. It's very, it's very <laughs> kind. OK. <laughs> thank you. Merry Christmas. Have a nice Christmas. <laughs> Bye. Well, that is quite a relief. I was getting a little bit anxious that I would be a surgical assistant for the evening, but it's fine. I'm going to wash my hands. Coming up... All these kills just for you. We'll catch up with Hardy back home from his icy dip and find out if Molly the matted shih tzu is out of the tangled woods. So uh, effectively, her legs have been so fixed for so long, she needs to learn to walk again. Trying to stroke her, but I wanted to actually feel it. Molly the Shih Tzu has already been through a three-hour ordeal, having her terribly matted coat removed. Incredible. But underneath that fur, what other problems were lurking? I'm worried that it's been going on that long. Is the dog even going to be able to walk? After a sleepless night, worrying about his four-legged friend, Inspector Anthony joins his first to visit now mat-free Molly to see how she's doing. Morning. Morning. Oh, she looks scared. What a difference a day makes. Barely recognisable from yesterday. That is incredible, though, isn't it? Go on. Go on. Stripping 12-year-old Molly of her monstrous mats unfortunately uncovered another problem, a severely deformed paw. So uh, effectively, her legs have been so fixed for so long, she needs to learn to walk again and, and get the movement back in the yeah. legs, and the, the muscles won't be used to no. moving at all. Hello, that's a bit speedy. Take it easy. But with the right treatment and care, she should lead a happy life. All that's left to do of Molly's makeover is to take a nice warm bath. Oh, is that nice? Before Anthony can take her to the animal centre, where she will continue to recover and rehabilitate. Don't forget behind the ears, guys. Ooh. Let's get you in here. I'm probably going to feel the cold with all that fur, two kilos of fur removed. Keep it nice and warm. With a new coat and a new owner at the top of her Christmas list. Smog as a bug in a rug. Will Miracle Molly get what she wished for? After a chilly start for Inspector Jackie Miller and hapless hound Hardy, the day is drawing to a close in Northumberland. Before she finishes her shift, Jackie is on her way to pay one last visit. Hello! To the lovable Labrador. Hiya, Sona! She's now safely back at home with Oda Louise. Oh, that's better. You look warmer now, aren't you? It's mm, so nice. I was actually seeing a patient today and I heard my phone text and I just ignored it because I was I'm a, working in the community and it wasn't until lunchtime. I thought, oh, my phone made a noise early. I'll have a look. And it was Pat, the, the lady who was walking hardy today. Can you ring me as soon as possible, please? And when I phoned, I couldn't believe what she was telling us. Uh, give all the fright. 
You could at least feel a bit guilty, Hardy. You are an otter. You're an otter in dog form, with that big paddle on the end. Hmm? A big paddle. Someone's certainly enjoying the attention. She's our hero, isn't she? She's our hero. Mm. New friend. Oh, he's got a new pal. Ah! Oh. New pal. All these kills just for you. Remarkably, Hardy's ordeal mm -hmm. doesn't seem yes. to have left him with any lasting damage. Perhaps it's just not walking by the river anymore, the water, <laughs> the beach. Yeah. It's your daily dose of the sea, I think, that's kept you alive, matey. I think so. Because mm -hmm. you're used to it. Yes. But, you know, if you were a cat, you probably would have lost one life today. It would have been a horrible Christmas, wouldn't it, if he wasn't here? It would have been a horrible Christmas, but it's the best Christmas ever now, eh, so now? Amazing job you're doing. Thank you very much. You know what? If we can do it, then we'll do it. Thanks, Jackie. Bye. Bye bye. Well, it's safe to say that this happy hound is very grateful to be spending another Christmas by the fire. It's lovely and Back at Putney Animal Hospital, I'm pleased to report that Bo the Dalmatian has woken up and is doing well and I've got a surprise visitor. Earlier, we met Molly, a Shih Tzu with a coat so matted it was putting her life at risk. Well, I'm happy to announce, in a mini Christmas miracle, I've been joined by none other than Molly and her new owner. How are you? We're both good, thank yeah, you. Good. And here you are, look, there's your face. <laughs> Hello, Molly. So, Shelby, is Molly part of the family now? Oh, God, yes. Yeah, she's my baby. How did you meet yeah. him? Um, I actually lost my own two dogs oh, um, it, in a matter of seven months. So the house was really empty, and I just thought I'd go to Rural Animal Sanctuary. I went into reception and sat on the floor, and she come you come over, lit me on the nose, and I thought, you're coming home with me. So Molly was the first dog you saw? Yes, yeah. It was just that one look. Love at first sight. <laughs> and she has a few little problems, doesn't she? I know her paws aren't quite what they're meant to be, are they? I know that this one bends in, so we're not allowed to pave walk at the moment. Right. It's just only on grass. We have our little walk of a morning, uh -huh. and then we go in here. She goes in there. When she gets tired, she, she loves being in here. She does. She, she just brings me so much happiness and joy. She really does. Oh, well, it's so lovely that you've found one another. Mm -hmm. Molly, you've got a lovely home. And I wish you a happy Christmas. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank nice you. To meet you. And you too. Well, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the show as much as me and Molly here. It's been a truly inspiring day seeing the hard work and dedication of the vets and nurses here in South London. All that's left to do is to wish you and all our four-legged friends a very happy Christmas. Hello and welcome to the Dog Rescuers. Today we've got lots of puppies for you to meet including these little chaps here who I'm spending the day with. There's also a surprise litter of seven for one inspector, as well as a curious terrier that finds himself in a very tight spot indeed. You just never know what a pup will get up to next. What's that? <gasps> Coming up. So I could clearly hear dogs inside the address, so I know there's dogs in there now. A two-dog rescue for Inspector Claire Wilson unexpectedly becomes a much bigger one. You've had puppies as well, so you've got a male and a female and seven puppies. Right, you're going to have to hand them all over. Is he actually stuck? <laughs> it's a tight squeeze for tiny pup Ringo and an unusual rescue for Inspector Anthony Joins. I'm going to make a little bit of a mess here, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. So I thought we'd go and knock some doors. And Angelica Bell hits the road with Hershey Bowl to see what an inspector's life is really like. The call was about a big white dog, which is why I was so shocked when you said, I've got a chihuahua. It's late afternoon in County Durham, and Inspector Claire Wilson is on the trail of a couple she dealt with three years ago when they were banned from keeping animals for life. I went in and there were four dogs, and they were all different breeds. There was urine and feces everywhere, and all four dogs were totally emaciated. 
like emaciated to the extreme. Despite their ban, Claire has new information to suggest they've got dogs again. What it says is that they've moved towns so that they can have dogs and so that people don't know that they're banned from keeping animals. But obviously somebody knows because they've reported it to us. Before she knocks at the front door, Claire checks the back of the property for any evidence that they're keeping dogs. I can see dog feces. I was the one that removed the previous animals and, and saw what state they were in, so I'm never going to walk away. So I could clearly hear dogs inside the address, so I know there's dogs in there now. I don't think they saw me, they just probably don't answer the door to anybody um, because they're worried that we're going to come knocking. It looks as though Claire will have to try another day until she spots a familiar face. The man who originally received the banning order. Well, I'm actually just about to go to work. Yeah, I realise that, but we've got to deal with the fact that you've got dogs. I know you have. My wife's not in. Yeah, well... I'm, the... I'm late for work. Well, you're going to have to at least go in, give us the dogs, and then we'll have to come back and interview you another time. Um, but we're going to have to do that now. The owner agrees to let Claire into the house. I know it's upsetting, but we've got to deal with this. Um... As it turns out, the man's wife is at home. Hi. So obviously I need to see the dogs. And it's confirmed that despite their ban, there are two adult dogs in the property, a German Shepherd and a crossbreed. So if you've got animals, you're committing an offence. Do you understand that? Well, I've got to interview you both. When somebody is breaching their ban and keeping animals when they're banned from doing so, they don't take them out for a walk because they're worried that someone's going to see them and report them. To keep them in a dark, stuffy, smelly house all the time is causing them to suffer, in my opinion. But it seems two adult dogs isn't all the owners have been hiding. You've had puppies as well. So you've got a male and a female and seven puppies. Right. You're going to have to hand them all over. The couple have no choice but to sign all nine dogs over. By the time Claire's finished interviewing them, it's early evening. They seem very nervous, the mum and dad, um, so I'm going to be getting them to put them in the van so that, obviously, we stress them out as least as possible. Because they've not been socialised, then they're incredibly frightened when strangers do come in the house or when they're taken out of the house. And that's a massive welfare issue because obviously we've got to remove them and rehome those animals and you're basically starting from scratch. The adult dogs are German Shepherd Leo and Mum Gemini, a crossbreed. I'm not going to travel the puppies in with Mum because obviously there's a risk that she'd stand on them in transit. clock off and go home. It's been a long day for Claire, but a great result. The nine dogs will spend the night at a local vet and be examined in the morning. It's been less than 24 hours since Claire Wilson rescued nine dogs, including seven puppies, from a couple who'd been banned from keeping animals. They arrived at the vets late last night, so the four-week-old German Shepherd cross pups are being seen this morning by vet Cecile Spring. Let's listen to your heart. <laughs> As they were being kept hidden by their owners, it's unlikely they've been wormed or vaccinated, which is vitally important for young puppies. But weight-wise, they seem to have been well-fed by their mum, Gemini. There we go. 
<laughs> so, we have a nice tricolour. 2.09 kilograms. Let's see, we're a boy. 2.09, yeah. Yeah. He's nice and chubby, that's what we expect at this age. Yeah. Claire is taking photos to support her case against the owners who breached their ban. Heart sounds fine. I know. The lungs sound fine. Each pup is microchipped by injection under the skin at the back of the neck. Brace yourself, little one. Ooh. Oh, there you go. Well done. That's a brave puppy. Chipping is now a legal requirement by the time a puppy is eight weeks old. And it'll be an easy way of us telling which one's which as well. So we don't have to do them now, but they're big enough and it makes sense to do them now. Thankfully, the seven German Shepherd Cross pups all look healthy. <laughs> oh, I love it when they yawn. <laughs> Time for your morning nap, isn't it? All these adorable puppies will be named once they reach an animal centre. For now, this one is CW7. Very catchy. Hello. Yeah, Hello. that's the prettiest one. You've got your dad's colours, but no pointy ears. No. There you go. Are you a poser? Take my picture, please. Right, will you pose like that again, please? I could do a selfie. Good boy. <laughs> that is cute. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thankfully, Claire has got to the puppies in good time, so they won't have the same socialisation issues as their parents. Yeah, yeah that's it. There's a window of time um, when they're quite young puppies where it's really important to get as much socialising done because that's when they're kind of learning all those new experiences. Aren't you lovely? This one looks like trouble. Stick your tongue out. <laughs> the more experiences you can give them when they're a young puppy, the, the more socialised and happy and well balanced they will be when they're an adult. Peace. <laughs> Adorable. With a clean bill of health, these sleeping beauties will join their parents at the animal centre. We'll catch up with these little bundles of joy later. But first, we're joining the newest member of the dog rescuers team, Angelica Bell. Now, have you ever wondered what it takes to be an RSPCA inspector? Well, today I've been given the chance to go out on shift with one of our regulars to find out for myself what the job is really like. And it's West Midlands-based inspector Hershey Bowl who'll be showing me the ropes today. Hershey, hi. Hi. Hi, good to see you. So what was it that made you want to be an inspector? Just a passion for animal welfare, really, and, you know, wanting to make a difference and wanting to help. Now, one thing I do know is that you've been in the job for 18 years. I have, yes. That's a long time, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It makes me feel quite old. <laughs> no, no. It makes me think you really care about this job. I do, yeah. It's been sort of a dream, really. It's a dream job for me. Now, obviously, there's the dramatic element of the job uh, where you have to save animals, but there's much more to it, isn't it? So most of my job really is about educating the public and giving them any assistance and help that I can along the way. What have we got on the agenda today? So I've got a list of calls that are quite local to here. Yeah. So I thought we'd go and knock some doors and look at some dogs, hopefully. Great. Hershey's one of the charity's 340 inspectors who have a daily list of complaints to investigate, most of which are reported to the 24-hour cruelty hotline. So where are we going to first? So we're going to a complaint about someone that isn't able to look after the dog very well and is struggling, apparently. I could see how, for an owner, if they're in the house, they've got their animal, then all of a sudden you turn up on the door. Oh, yeah. Well, who's contacted them in the first place? And the one thing that people are most sensitive about are children and animals. You accuse them of not looking after those things properly, and that is it. But I think I'm quite good at I can talk my way in and talk my way out of the situation. Yeah. Let the door knocking commence. Hello, darling. Put a call about a dog. But there's no dog at this address. So it's definitely not here. Hello, darling. Yeah. Put a call about a dog. Is it all right if I just have a quick look at him? Oh, he looks fine. He looks fine, actually. So, unfortunately, that's just a... I don't know, it's a bit of a wild goose chase, that one. There's nothing wrong with the dog. 
Do you often have, like, false alarms? Yes and no. Sometimes people can say something about somebody's dog and they might think it's thin or they might think there's an issue and actually there's nothing wrong with it. Inspectors investigate more than 140,000 complaints every year. Hershey and I have a few more on our list. Oh, I heard somebody. Remember, really, it's just there. Hello. Don't answer. Can't be good if someone's in. One of the calls we're following up on is apparently about a large white dog. Hello, darling. Do you have a dog? I've got a tiny chihuahua. A chihuahua? Well, she's definitely not large. The call was about a big white dog, which is why I was so shocked when you said, I've got a chihuahua. <laughs> Bye. You have to expect the unexpected in this job. So who knows what we'll find at our next call about a thin Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Hello. Is your mum in or your dad? Hello. No, you're right. yeah. Hiya. Got a call about a staffy type dog? You have, a, have you got a dog? Yeah, coming in. Bullseye. There is a staffy here. He's rather adorable and not underweight. It's another false lead. Oh, hello. Look at you. OK. So who have we got here, then? Tyson. So how old is Tyson now? He's 14. 14? He's just living out his last day. Yeah, do you think? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? He's quite happy in himself, really, isn't he? I did notice, and, you know, I can't not say it. Mm. Yeah. He's got quite a lump on there. Just keep an eye on his uh, testicles, yeah, so to speak, <laughs> and check that they... <laughs> it's the kind of things I have to say, Angelica. I know, I know, what I know, I... and I'm laughing like a child. Yeah. No, no, but what can, I... <laughs> what can I do? You can see, as long as they don't change too much in size... It seems an inspector has to cast an eye over every single bit of a dog's body. Well spotted, Hershey. At the end of the day, he's happy and he's sprightly, good condition yeah. for a dog of that age. Just keep an eye on him, really. Yeah. Thank you for letting us come in your home. Well, I've met some gorgeous dogs, and thankfully, so far, we've not had to rescue any. But there's still more calls to follow up on for hard-working Hershey. So I guess anything can happen. We'll see how the rest of Angelica and Hershey's day went later. As we've just seen, being an inspector takes a great deal of patience and dedication. And the same could be said for anyone involved in dog training. In the last show, we met nervous Jack Russell Radley, who was one of 37 dogs signed over to the charity after a council eviction. <laughs> he was completely unsocialised and scared of human contact, which meant finding him a new home was going to be very difficult. <laughs> Scary. Certified clinical animal behaviourist Sarah Whitehead has been working with Radley for the past two weeks to help manage his fear and stress. And so far, with the help of some fresh chicken treats, she's starting to gain his trust. Lovely. He actually gave me the weight of his chin on my hand then. She's also been working on making stress-free eye contact. Nice. Very good. So I'm getting slightly longer duration. And after a shaky start... All right, all right. Oh, yeah. She's even been able to take him out on a lead. Wow. Thank you. Staying at the front of the kennel, this is an amazing difference in this dog. You can say hi. Oh, good boy. Right, let's go. But there's still the matter of human contact to contend with. To find his forever home, Radley will need to connect with his new owners. Very good boy. That's a new place, isn't it? Come on. Very nice. Good. So I'm beginning to feel a connection. Good. And that's what he needs in order to be able to get a new home, because he has to convince somebody else to fall in love with him, which isn't going to be that difficult, really. No, that'll be the easy bit. But Radley will have to learn to cope with things like having his muddy paws cleaned. At the moment, he doesn't really like people touching him. Very good boy. Good. So if he allows me to touch him, I'm going to mark it by saying good, and then I'm going to give him a food treat. And I'm just going to see if I can encourage him to have his paws wiped in a very gentle way. Very good boy. Good. 
So I'm not actually doing a huge amount of wiping to begin with. It's more about just me having contact with his leg and his foot. Good boy. So he did a little jump that says, oh, I don't really like it when people touch me, but I'm going to make it worth his while. Good. No jump that time. Give me a bit of chicken then. It's really important that we actually teach our dogs how to accept being toweled off, being bathed, being groomed, looked at by the vet. For a dog like Radley, who finds human touch really intrusive, we have to teach him that it's a nice thing, uh, not just a thing he has to tolerate. The dog that only weeks ago couldn't bear to be near people is now coping well with being touched. So now Sarah's going to up the ante with a bit of basic training, teaching him to lie down on cue. Involves me doing a tiny bit of yoga. Downward dog. Let's do it with your lead off. I don't think you're going anywhere. It's another sign of Radley's progress. The little escape artist is no longer interested in running off. Sarah has been using the clicker method and some tasty chicken to reward Radley. Good boy. So he's actually learning a new body position. This is new in his repertoire. Clever boy. And if you can't do a yoga position... I cannot do a yoga position. You can easily use a coffee table or lure the dog under a chair just to get the, get the behaviour started. So it's very important if you're going to try this that you don't push on the dog. It's their choice whether they go under the bridge or not. That's all it is. And very quickly we're going to see if we can get rid of needing to have the bridge there at all. I'm going to move my leg out of the way. And see if he stays there, and he does. Really good. For a dog that really likes to escape more than anything else, this is very, very positive. As Radley's learnt how to limbo under Sarah's leg, that's it for today. See you later. I have high hopes for our next session. I can then do a very easy handover to somebody who might be able to take him home. And I think then very quickly they'll see rapid development, but also how he can make a connection with his new human and build that bond. Things are looking good for Radley. We'll catch up with him later to see if his forever home can become a reality. Also coming up... So Jack's really your companion now, He is now, now, he? yes. He's definitely my companion oh. now. Angelica and Hershey meet a Jack Russell that truly is a man's best friend. Without yeah. him, I'd be lost. Really would be lost without him. And Anthony joins, rushes to the rescue of a puppy in a pickle. He's just stuck, isn't he? Yeah. So we will get him out. I promise you we'll get him out. All oh, right, little one. Oh. On Merseyside, Inspector Anthony joins is on his way back to visit a dog he rescued a week ago. The eight-week-old puppy, called Ringo, had got his head trapped in an unexpected place. A drum kit. No, not drum kit. And this was one of those where you just think, is it the 1st of April? You know, is that going to be... Is it real? I think it's the first job of that kind I've had in nine years. Literally, as I pulled up, I got out the van and I could hear a dog yelping. And then even then, I didn't know what to expect. Is he actually stuck? <laughs> so I've gone round the back of the TV cabinet. <laughs> then it did look a little bit comical. I'll get you out. You just saw this little beautiful teacup Yorkie head surrounded by, you know, a huge piece of wood. Norwegian wood. But don't worry, he's just stuck, isn't he? Yeah. So we will get him out. I promise you we'll get him out. All right, little one. But then I was thinking, what am I going to do? You know, am I going to get the fire service out or am I going to give it a go myself? We don't get many toy Yorkies stuck in TV cabinets. Cos if we can get this off, trying it out on the top one, cos that comes out... <sighs> Let me go and see what... I'm not very good with DIY at all either, so I'm not even allowed to loosen my house with a hammer. I'm not going to hurt you. Once again, Anthony's DIY skills have let him down. He could do with a little help from his friends. Or cooking oil. Right. Yep, cooking oil. I'm going to make a little bit of a mess here, if you don't mind. Literally smothered little Ringo completely up all over his head and neck. Don't pull. You're right. I just managed to just do enough to push his head through 
Should be through. Is he through? Right, pass him here. Oh, come here. When I get him out, you know, I didn't realise my voice would go that high pitch, but I was just so, I was so made up and happy that he was out. Hey, we got you. Bit more Bee Gees than Beatles. But the plucky little pup seemed to have survived his big adventure unscathed. Last time I seen him, he'd basically, you know, look like, a bit like a drowned rat. Anthony is about to see what difference one week and a few soapy baths from owner Verity have made to puppy Ringo. A drum roll, please. Doing, Verity? You okay? I'm fine, thank you, honey. I've come to see Ringo, if that's okay with you. Oh, I'm sure he'll. I'm really he excited mind. to see him. Oh, I'm sure he would love to see you. Where's that little star, Ringo? I can see him. There he is. Oh, he's stuck in a hole. Ringo. Hey, buddy. Come say hello. Yes, yes. Do you remember me? Looks like he does. Hello. Do you remember me? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I remember you. Come here. Come here, little one. Hi. <laughs> oh, you look much less oily this time. Hey, how are you doing, little one? You were stressed, weren't you, my little mate? Yes, you were. He's not stressed now, is he? He's not stressed now, <laughs> are you? Hey, he's just so sweet. Aren't you? It's like he's not even real sometimes when he's like a little teddy bear, isn't he? Oh. To stop this little cub getting in more trouble, Verity's covered the hole he got trapped in. I can see you've... Yeah, we barricaded it. A load of books there now, and yeah. I think it's too heavy for him to push over. Yeah, he's not going to get through there, is he? No. Right. <laughs> you stay out of trouble, young man. Stay out of trouble. But seriously, if he does get in trouble, give me a bell. Because it'll be a pleasure. I'll, I'll be straight. I'll be straight back. He is a little legend, that dog. You are. That job and that. Little puppy is going to be a job that I'll remember for a long time. Well, as we've just seen, puppies can get into all sorts of scrapes if you don't keep a close eye on them. And just like children, they need care and education to turn them into well-balanced grown-ups. An important part of that is socialisation. And to tell me more is welfare specialist Marie Thackbury. So socialisation is a term that we often hear when talking about dogs. What does it really mean? Well, it's, um, it's getting them used to everything they might encounter in life, really. Um, forming habits um, so that they're kind of more accepting of the big wide world. So things like getting used to other species, getting used to children, um, and things as simple as the washing machine, the TV, hairdryer, hoover, um, and get them used to... And what do you being... say to people who are going to take a puppy home? How should they get their home ready? Um, I guess safety is, is the most important thing, making sure that... Safety for um, the dog. Safety for the not dog. The <laughs> not, not so <laughs> much. <laughs> um, so things like TV <laughs> wires, um, any electrical items and things like that, that making they sure they're chew. tucked away. Because puppies will chew all sorts. Right. And they've got their sharp little teeth and they want to get them into things. So making sure they've got appropriate toys to, to use their teeth on. Are they good to have around young children? What do you say to families with young children? Well, it's all about teeth and, and paws at this stage, so it's making sure that the children are trained as well as the puppy. Right. Um, so making sure that this behaviour isn't encouraged by, You've got by a young great children. tolerance for having your hand bitten off, haven't you? You're just you get used talking to talking as if nothing's happening. It's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to toilet training, is it just a, a matter of thinking, they haven't had a wee for a while, better put them outside? It is indeed. It's just keeping an eye on... What, they, what their habits are. Yeah, looking out for their little cues of when they might need to go to the toilet. So if they're having a little sniff or a little scoot around, um, then taking them to the area that is appropriate. And lots of praise when they do it in the right place. Loads of praise when they do it in the r right place. And obviously when they do it in the wrong place, it's just an oopsie moment. We don't pay any attention to that. It's, a, it's an oopsie moment. It's an oopsie moment. And I suppose it's really tricky when you get puppies like this to find new homes, is it? I don't suppose you get any interest. Um, they were snapped up straight away. Weren't they? Yeah. I can't even take one, even if I was allowed. <laughs> Get off with shoelaces. That's a good good tip. The puppy will undo your shoelaces and then you will fall over. <laughs> Let's look out for that. 
at Millbrook Animal Centre in Surrey, it's the fourth and final week of behavioural training for Jack Russell Radley, who arrived at the centre extremely nervous and unsocialised. Good boy. Come in. Very good boy. Very good. Come in. That's it. Animal behaviourist Sarah Whitehead has one more vital exercise for him to master to help him find a forever home. Oh, very good. Over the past weeks, Radley has learnt that a click from Sarah's clicker means a reward. Oh, that's nice. Good boy. So I love it when a dog first gives me eye contact. I think we're ready for the next stage, and that's to start sharing his loyalties with some other people. Radley's beginning to trust Sarah, but today she wants him to interact with someone new, one of her training team, Joe. He spotted her already. Only by being confident around new people will Radley find someone to take him home. So this is, this is Radley. And, Hi, Radley. Um, as you can tell, he's not the most confident boy in the world, particularly with people that he doesn't know. So I thought if we sit down... Yes. If he then says that you look like a nice, interesting person, looks at you, gives you eye contact, not just me, he does, I'm going to click, and you can give the food treat. Who's this come to say hello to you? So he looked at you, so I click, and you can deliver the food treat, even if it's on the floor. Oh, brown. that's really good, because he took it from you. This is how we would potentially do a handover to a prospective owner, because I want him to gaze lovingly at that person to say, yes, you're my human. Radley. Lovely. Wow, Radley's learned his name. The first time I met Radley, he was at the back of the kennel. I mean, it really took... It took us probably about 35 minutes to come within about 10 feet of me. So actually, we're doing really, really well. So I can see that he's starting to orient towards you more. And I'm not hurt at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we should try something different now. And actually, as soon as you change the picture for the dog, he needs to relearn that it's the same exercise. So let's see if he can give you eye contact, even with me standing here when we're both standing upright. Just a little tiny change in the environment. Oh, and he looked at you straight away, so I'm going to click and you can give a food treat. Brilliant. And let's just pop the food treats on the chair. That's nice, it's not on you. Oh, he's gazing at you lovingly. Really nice. Radley. Yay, very good. I think I'm going to hand over the lead as well. Radley. Good. Brilliant. Radley. Playing hard to get now, Radley. Yes, good. And these are the things that are really going to help him get a home because if he sits and looks cute and gazes at someone, who could resist him? Yep, he's mastered the irresistible look for chicken. Well, Joe, I think that went really well. Yeah. I think you did brilliantly, mate. You're going to be able to cope with sitting on my knee. Are oh, you? Yes, good boy. Very good boy. I've seen a real transformation in Radley. The dog who, right at the beginning, not only couldn't bear to be within 10 foot of me, <coughs> every single thing about him said, I just want to escape from people. I don't want to be near them. To a dog who, today, has actually managed to meet someone he's never met before, a complete stranger. And when he did, he gave her full eye contact. I'm clicking in for that because he was gazing at you adoringly, and that's what we're after. I'm absolutely certain now that as soon as he finds the right human being to be with, he will make that bond. In fact, he will make that bond very tightly. Once he does that, I see that he's going to have a very bright future. And that's great news for the Animal Centre's deputy manager, Liz Wood. Radley's made great progress with us. He's become a much more confident, friendly dog. He's now able to come out, go for walks, meet other dogs and meet new handlers quite confidently. So he's gonna go on leaps and bounds and then hopefully go on go up for adoption and find the perfect family. Bradley certainly deserves a loving new home. Let's hope he gets one soon. Now, let's catch up with Hershey and Angelica. I'm experiencing firsthand what a day's work is like for an RSPCA inspector. Hershey Bowl and I have a long list of complaints to investigate. So it's on to the next one about a dog with matted fur. So this is a call about a dog called Jack, um, and Jack is a Jack Russell. So far today, we've driven for miles, and I'm amazed at the variety of calls we've answered. Oh, the 
door's already open. Hello? Hi. I had a call about your dogs. There's a problem with it? No, he's all right. Is he? OK, what's your dog called? Jack. Jack. Do you mind if I pop in? Hello, darling. Let's have a look. Oh, hello, sweetheart. Oh, look at you. We've had him 14 years because right. he was a rescue dog to start with. Was he? Yeah. Oh, look at him. He's lovely as well. Okay. He, looks, he looks like he's just had a little shave. No, he's just... To be honest with you, he's getting old now, yeah. so he's going a bit thin in places. And what's he like on his feet, then? Does he walk around much? Cos yeah, he's so... Well, he's walks around OK, yeah. yeah. I've got to take him down the vets. OK. Because he's got to have his claws clipped. OK. And he's got to have his booster injection. Oh, all right, OK. Jack's definitely well-loved, but my eyes are drawn to owner Paul's cuddly toys. Look how many teddies you've got in this room. <laughs> I'm like, do you collect these? No, well, the wife died about a year ago, and oh. she, she was the collector of all the bears. Oh, bless her heart. I can't actually get rid of him because he's a member of the wife. <laughs> exactly. Wife, I? So Jack's really your companion. Yes, he's definitely my companion oh, now. So he was always with me. I take him everywhere and he sticks by me through thick and thin, don't you? Oh. Without yeah. him, I'd be lost. Really? Oh. Really would be lost without him, yeah. That's what dogs do for you, though, isn't it? Yeah, They're your friends, yeah, really. Yeah. Oh. And he's as good as gold. Aren't you? Yes, you are. Yes. He's very sweet, aren't you? It's another misleading call. Jack's obviously well looked after, just getting on a bit. But I'm happy to have met him and Paul. We Thank like you. him and we like you. Oh, that's all right. That's no, all right, then. Like it's, always a bo it's always a bonus when we like the owner. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good day, that Paul. <laughs> Take care, darling. Even just following Hershey today, you meet people who touch you. You know, you can see that Paul's Jack Russell, is his life is, you know, everything he lives for, and it's just so beautiful to see. It just makes you feel good, doesn't it? You can literally go, no, no one, no one's in, no one's in, no one's in, no one's in. Then go to a lovely man like that, and he's just so nice. It's a nice part of the day, you know. Hershey's job isn't all about knocking on doors. Sometimes she gets to check up on the dog she's previously rescued. We're off to the kennels to meet one. Onwards and upwards. Three months ago, Trixie was found by a member of the public wandering the streets. Hershey brought her here, Newbrook Farm Animal Centre. She's, She's really looking... Healthy. Yeah, she does now, but, you know, initially when I first started her case, she was extremely emaciated, just a bag of bones. You know, she looks incredible now, so... Right, so I think what we'll do is we'll take her for a little walk. Oh, look, now you're interested, aren't you? Are you interested? <laughs> oh, no, come on, Danny. Good girl. Right, come on, then. Oh, you're keen, aren't you? The busy inspectors don't always get the chance to catch up with dogs they've rescued. Usually, it's only if they're visiting the centre on another job. Right, darling, you're going to have a run. Go on, then. Go on, baby. Go on. <laughs> Good girl. Go. It must feel good, though, to see, see her running yeah, around. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, for me, it's really nice. That's great that you're giving dogs like, like Trixie sort of a new lease of life. It's these moments, actually, that keeps me going. It's knowing that she's going to have a better life with somebody that loves her and, and respects her. Yeah. Yeah, Trixie! Now, Hershey's been an inspector for almost 20 years. And even after all that time, What's been really apparent to me today is that she still has that sheer determination to help so many dogs. It's clearly a tough job, but it's times like this when it makes it all worth it. She's pretty special. Hey! Hiya. Hiya. <laughs> Why do you keep going back to my leg? Coming up. We're catching up with one of the pups rescued from the owners who breached their ban in his new home. I must admit, I did fall in love with him at first sight. <laughs> he was just so cute. Earlier, Inspector Claire Wilson rescued seven puppies from a couple who'd been banned from keeping animals for life. <laughs> Oh. I love it when they yard. The tiny German Shepherd cross pups were taken to Hull Animal Centre, where animal care assistant Sarah Johnson 
help to wean them onto solid food. Are you waking up? Here we go, what's this? Happily, all of these lively pups soon found their forever homes. While their owners pleaded guilty of breaching their lifetime ban and not providing a suitable environment. They received a 16-week suspended prison sentence and the judge made it clear they would be jailed if they got any other animals. Five months on, these bouncing babies have grown and grown. One of them, named Noctis, that's Latin for night, is now living with William Fullerton and his daughters Holly and Hannah. Well, the reason we uh, went to get a dog was my daughter's always wanted one and um, she spent nearly the better part of 10 years convincing me to get one. So we went and had a look at the um, rescue centre dogs. Noctis was just this big bundle of fur. It was Hannah that really wanted to go and get the dog, but I must admit I did, I did fall in love with him at first sight. <laughs> He was just he was just so cute. It wasn't just Noctis's good looks that attracted them. Noctis seemed to be quite social. He was quite forward. He's really good and really great natured with meeting people and, and other dogs. He's uh, he's really very very well socialised, and 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 was actually as a puppy really from the start. It's just a shame that Noctis's two feline siblings aren't so pally. Our cats have, have sort of moved upstairs to keep out of his way, and he's up there every chance he gets. And sometimes, if you catch him and you try and lead him back, he'll he'll, he'll go along with you, and 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 then you sort of let him go, and then he'll he'll pretend he's going to his room, and but then he'll just do a U-turn and go up the stairs again after you. So he's he's learned how to try and trick people. Sneaky. But Noctis is also learning to be a well-behaved lad. Getting him properly trained was the most important aspect for me. Lie down. Good boy. There were a lot of sort of guides online advocating arm um, clicker training because it's an instantaneous sort of response. Stay. Good boy. Noctis. Good boy. Noctis is only six months old right now, so I think that having the basic commands down is fairly good. Hannah sort of really took her task very seriously and gone out and done all the, the correct research. I forget him to focus on me first. Noctis. Come on, Noctis. Stop, stop Don't let her down. Point. Noctis. Noctis. That's better. So he looked at me there, so I clicked and I gave him the treats. So he associates good behaviour with getting nice, tasty treats. Nice work, Hannah. Seems Noctis was rescued in the nick of time. He's definitely on his way to being a well-balanced, happy adult dog. So did our little friend Radley manage to find someone to take him home? Of course he did. He's a good boy, huh? Wow, what's that? Tiny. He's found his very own humans, Kurt and Isabel Bernhard, and he's loving his new toys. Oh, look at you. Been... Well, he loves playing with his little balls when he's in the right mood, so he can throw them himself and catch them, which is, is quite special. <laughs> Impressive. He has really livened up the house, definitely. The little chap has made that all-important connection with his new family. He loves to be with us and sits on our laps and he's turned into quite a lap dog. We have such good communication with each other. You know, I'm sure he's thinking about me most of the time and I'm thinking about him. So he's definitely here to stay and he's settled in very well. Brilliant news. On today's show, you'll see just how far our dog rescues will go for little ones like Olivia here. And you'll also find out that sometimes it's not just those with four legs that need rescuing. What's this? It's all right. Coming up, two Rottweilers abandoned in squalid conditions are in desperate need of help. Yeah, this is when we find dead dogs in the dresses. English Bull Terrier takes a fancy to Inspector Sam Durrant. No, don't hump my leg, though. You don't need that, thanks. No! No, I'm being... No, no. And Angelica Bell meets a giant breed of dog being trained to save lives at sea. 
if it wasn't for his being on the sea that day, I think I wouldn't be here today. You know, I, my, my kids would be without a mum. We sometimes deal with very sad stories on the programme, and you might find that this next one is particularly upsetting. You weather breezy and bright this afternoon with Radio Merseyside News. Good afternoon. Welcome to the programme. And we'll be looking at animal lovers. Are we a nation of animal lovers or animal haters? I've dealt with skinny dogs all along the spectrum. But this will remain with me for the rest of my life, really. Inspector Anthony Joins is responding to an urgent call on Merseyside. You know, when you get the call, a lot of them sound really bad. Quite often, you get there and it's not as bad as it sounds. Earlier in the morning, a desperately weak and skinny border collie had to be put to sleep by a vet. Anthony's heading to the owner's property to investigate. To get a job and then turn up and it's, it's worse than what it sounded. You know, that's, it takes you by surprise a little bit. He's allowed into the house and finds another desperately thin collie called Freddy. Hey, hey little one. Hey, little one. How are you? You're very skinny. This is a black and white collie called Freddy. He's about two years old. Really concerned that he's absolutely emaciated. To starve a dog to the point of death, it's a slow form of torture. Even for a long-haired dog, we can see almost every bone in his body, all of the ribs, the hips, the spine, every bone in the vertebrae. Just uh, lowest of the low, really. Despite Freddy's famished appearance, Anthony discovers a large bag of dog food in the house, unopened. Poor lad must be starving. I can't offer you much food, buddy, until we've done some blood tests, OK? How can you do that? How can you sit there eating your dinner of an evening when your dogs need food and they are pining for food and they must be crying out and you just ignore them? That's one thing I'll never be able to understand, ever. Um... Animal welfare officer John Littlewood is also at the scene. Come on. Yes, sir. Straight in the cage. Yeah, he did when he comes straight in. Straight in. You're going in there, bud. Anthony suspects Freddy's used to being left in a small cage. I like to see cages used as a place of safety, their bed, and, and that, that's as far as it goes. Anthony's seen enough. Now he must get Freddy the help he desperately needs. <laughs> en route, Anthony arranges for the police to meet him at the vets. Hey, bud. I won't even give you that treat, unfortunately, until you've had a blood test. Hey? Be brave. Come on. I'm your new best mate. You just don't know it yet. I want to carry you down. No weight in him at all. All right, bud. All right, it's OK. Normally quite difficult to tell the body condition of a dog with long hair, and I could see straight away that he was emaciated. Look at these raised bits here. These are the... The, that's the pelvic bones. It's every bit of the vertebrae here. It's just heartbreaking and demoralising that we weren't there for the first one as well. I hate starvation jobs are the worst jobs you can deal with. There's no excuse for that, is there, bud? Understandably, Freddy's poor condition is distressing for everyone involved. But he's safe now. Sadly, the same can't be said for his friend Harvey. The police will need to seize his body as evidence. 7.75 kilos. Should be weighing more like 20 kilos. When a dog is starved for a prolonged period, its organs can stop functioning properly and eventually fail. Shouldn't go in the same sentence, should it, really? A two-and-a-half-year-old collie and 
dead and emaciated. Just really heartbreaking because we haven't managed to save this one. It stays like this, you just think, I need to do something else with my career and with my life. It's so sad. While there was nothing that could be done for Harvey, Anthony and the team are praying they've got to Freddie in time. It's OK. It's OK. On Merseyside, an emaciated two-year-old border collie called Freddie has been rescued by Inspector Anthony Joins. Tragically, Freddie's friend couldn't be rescued in time. All Anthony can do now is seek justice for them both and get Freddie the care he desperately needs. Just going to get a wait for, for him as well. That's what we can see. Sit. Sit. 11.55. Four kilos heavier than your friend. Freddie will be examined by vet Becky McAlpine. There he is. Hey, Freddie. Good hey, Freddie. Boy. Just weighed him in reception. He's 11.55, obviously his friend was 7.55. That's obviously the difference, isn't it, why he's alive? Yeah. Imagine yeah. This is the worst I've seen ever, I would say. There's just nothing of him. He wouldn't last much longer, put it that way. When dogs are as thin as Freddy, their organs can begin to shut down. So Becky needs to take blood samples to see how his are functioning. So if you just sort of stay on back end and then Sarah can lift the head up for me. But as she doesn't know how Freddie will react, she's using a muzzle. Good boy. He's a good boy. Good, good lad. Oh, you brave. Well done. Oh, finished. What a star. Hey, well done, mate. To make sure blood samples aren't affected, they need to be taken before food. With the hard part out of the way, Freddie can finally get something to eat. Can't get it into his mouth fast enough, can he? If it was because of sort of an ongoing health problem, he might be less likely to eat. His appetite might not be as good. Um, but he was starving then, quite obviously starving. And although all you want to do is pile a bowl up full, it's quite dangerous, so you've got to be really careful. So unfortunately, he'll have to cope with little meals for quite some time. He's definitely been suffering and in pain and emotional trauma of being starved and all of his body shutting down. He'll be struggling when he's trying to move. Oh, so he was struggling then just to get up, wasn't he? Yeah, really. So, come on then. Should we go? Come on then. Freddie's taken to Wirral Animal Centre, where he'll get the care he needs. What happened to Harvey makes me really angry. Uh, it's when neglect crosses that border into cruelty. It creates a real rock of anger in my chest, and I'll use that um, to do a real good job on the investigation and make sure that his suffering won't go unanswered, and rightly so. At least tonight, Freddie will have a warm bed and a full tummy. See you later. We'll be back with him later. From one Anthony to another, Inspector Anthony Pulfer is on his way to a property in South East London. We received a call from the local police force with concerns for a couple of Rottweilers at an address. The police can't locate the dog's owner and are worried about how long they may have been left for. They believe these dogs have been abandoned for up to three to four weeks. Anthony's also concerned about how the Rottweilers will react when he arrives. Like any dog who's scared, they could behave aggressively. Knowing that these dogs are, are Rottweilers, it does worry, you know, inspecting, because any Rottweiler could be a, an issue when they're scared. And there's just no doubt in my brain, I think how powerful that dog's jaw is, and I would not want to be on the wrong end of a Rottweiler. So you can really change your ways to try and bring them down, try and get something that makes them tick, whether it be a toy, food, 
soft voice. You might hear my softest voice going today, but it's amazing how much difference it makes. Soft voice, I remember that. Yeah, it's pretty bad in there. It's a lot of, a lot of clutter. But this address can't be that big. When you go into situations where the, the address is absolutely filthy, you don't get used to it, really. And you sort of don't realise how someone can get themselves in that position. Who knows when this gentleman was last seen, but looking inside the address, it shows a person not coping. You know, this is when we find dead dogs. It's all creating quite a worrying picture. Neglect. The police still haven't located the owner, but when they came by yesterday, they discover the house unlocked with the key in the front door. Hello, buddy, you all right? Hello there, you all right? All right, how's it going? Yeah. So what it is, yeah, we, we came because it was like a worry about the safety of the bloke in there. Yeah. yeah. Um, the welfare, yeah. So we've heard the dogs barking, yeah. shouting, no, no answer. So we've gone yeah, in, it's a right state in there. There's feces yeah. everywhere. I think we've just got to get them out, haven't we? Absolutely right. Dogs living in environment. Lots of feces, urine soaked floorboards, inadequate bedding. It's not having its needs met with food and water. They're stressed and can sometimes make them a little bit aggressive. And at that point, you've got to handle them correctly, do it at their pace, and, uh, and getting them out of that situation. In the garden, Anthony finds what he's looking for soft voice, soft voice. What's this? It's all right. Good dog. Hello. Seems to be working. Here it comes, hello. There's a good doggy. There's a good doggy. It's OK. Hello. It's OK. Hello, it's OK. If I pass one, I'll get a yeah. sip on the other. Good Come dog. On, Come on, good good dog. dog. Come in, then. Do you want to go with? Do you want to come with? Do you want to come with? Looks like these rotties are in a hurry. These dogs were just, I think, keen to go for a walk. And once a slip lead was you know, put to their heads. They were on the leads, out the door, get me out of this house and into that van. I think they wanted to be out of that address, really. And I think I did as well, because it was so filthy. Despite their ordeal, the dogs, called Angel and Ricky, seem to be holding up well. In fact, very well. Good dog. In you go. Good girl. Good dog. In you go. Good girl. We haven't got thin dogs. I can't, I can't believe they're not thin. Seem active, seem alert, and as Rottweilers go, in good shape. Thankfully, despite being abandoned, Angel and Ricky appear to be well fed. Come in. They'll be checked over by a vet before being moved to an animal centre. We often see dogs being rescued from truly tragic situations, but sometimes the tables are turned and it's those on four legs that come to our rescue. Angelica Bell has been finding out about a very special breed of dog that's being trained to save people in life-threatening situations. This is Fozzie. He's a rescued Newfoundland whose previous owners gave him up when they could no longer look after him. But this big fella has not let his past hold him back because he's doing something quite extraordinary, aren't you? Aren't you? He's training to be a water rescue dog. Where should we go now? Go that way? I think so. Come on. Let's go for a run. Come on. <laughs> Newfoundlands are fantastic working dogs and can be employed as part of sled teams, bringing in fishing lines on boats or pulling heavy loads on farms. But they excel in the water. You all right? Yeah, yeah, fine, thank you. Come on, Come on Fuzzy. I'm meeting David Pugh, who teaches dogs like Fozzy to save lives at sea. Thank you, nice boat. Dave is going to show me these incredible canines in action. OK, here we go. This is Andy and Tuki jumping off the jetty. Here we go. Andy reaches the catch at his first. Tuki is following behind to do the rescue. Newfoundlands love the water. And their innate swimming abilities webbed feet, rudder-like tail, and formidable strength 
make them brilliant water rescue dogs. Picked up the rescuees and they're swimming back to the boat. Come on, you guys. David has trained over 130 dogs who help save lives alongside marine search and rescue organizations. Dog in first. Rescue over. It's amazing to see what they do, isn't it? Yeah. One of David's most successful trainees was a dog called Wiz. Tony Curtis knows only too well the life-saving service dogs like Wiz provide. Nice to oh, meet thank you. you. <laughs> Tony, thank you for speaking with me. Tell me what happened to you. Um, I was on holiday with my family and we'd gone to the beach this one particular day. It was a hot day. I went for a swim, it's cool off. Before I knew it, I was out further than what I'd actually swam. I realised then it was a, a rip current. Panic then really set in. I honestly thought that my life was gone. I went under a few times. Uh, I came up and I heard someone just shout, grab the dog. Well, could feel this massive dog and I just grabbed it and wow. It pulled me through the water. It saved my life. If it wasn't for his being on the sea that day, I think I wouldn't be here today. You know, I, my, my kids would be without a mum. Thank goodness Wiz was there that day, and Tony wasn't the only person he saved during his career. Wiz saved the lives of another eight people during his life and was posthumously awarded an animal OBE for his bravery. Wiz was adopted by David after a bad start in life, so he too was a rescue dog, just like Fozzie. Hello. Hi, Tony, Luke, let me show your hand. Nice to meet you. Hi, Luke. Nice to meet you, sir. Well, Fozzie's yours, isn't he? Yes, giant cuddly bear. I've had him now a couple of years, and uh, he's part of the family now, so yeah. we're, we're, uh, he's settling in well. So you've got your wetsuits on because you decided to volunteer today. Thank yes. you so much. So sure. should we get on? Let Fozzie do his thing. So on your way, chaps, let's try it. And while Fozzie is only at the beginning of his training, David is keen to show me what he can do already. Ready, Fozzie, ready. Seriously, go. With three children to pull and the yellow float adding resistance in the water, this exercise really tests Fozzie's strength and stamina. Go on, Fozzie. One day, Fozzie may be rescuing for real. Come on, boss. Well done. But for now, this is still pretty impressive. <laughs> well done, Fuzzy. Really good because it's a dog that's not been training with us very long. He's done the exercise perfectly and really pleased. Well, it looks like rescue dog Fozzie is well on his way to being a fully-fledged lifesaver. So the next time you're having fun in the water, it could well be Fozzie and his friends who are looking out for your safety. The initial information was dog was collapsed, has been hit by a car. Coming up, all is not as it appears when Inspector Sam Durrant is called to help an English Bull Terrier. Just go through sort of what you saw and what you did, is that all right? And can famished Freddy come back from the brink? This dog has had me worried sick. Just wanted more than anything for this dog to make it. Earlier, we met emaciated Freddy, who was rescued by Inspector Anthony Jones. So he was struggling then just to get up, wasn't he? Freddie was just over 11 kilograms, half of what he should weigh, and was days away from starving to death. His friend Harvey weighed even less and tragically didn't make it. Anthony's been so concerned, he's been to see Freddie every day since he was rescued three weeks ago. I have got about 50 more grey hairs over this dog. This dog has had me worried sick. It was so heartbreakingly sad about Harvey, and I just wanted more than anything for this dog to make it. 
I was incredibly worried. The manager of the animal centre was probably sick to death of me ringing in because I was, has he gained any weight today? Is he all right? How is he? And Anthony's been worried with good reason. He'd actually lost um, half a kilo. He'd gone down to just under 11 kilos. And we were really, really, really worried in case he'd just been pushed too far to the brink and he wasn't going to recover. But now, Freddie's starting to put on some much-needed pounds. After about five or six days, then, um, he he just started gaining weight and he hasn't really dropped it since and it started to go up and up and up, which is just... Oh, I can't say how happy I was. I was, I was literally overjoyed. It'd be an absolute joy for me to see you scoff your dinner. Fred, can't eat all that. Watch me. Hey, buddy. You ready? Yeah? Take your time, OK? This is, you're not going to be starved here. You're never going to be... You know, your next meal's not going to be far away. Take your time. Hey. To see just how well Freddy is doing, he's going back to vet Becky McAlpine. Time for your weigh-in, Freddy. Moment of truth, buddy. Come on. Come here. No, this way. Come here. Sit down. Sit down. Sit. Sit. OK, lie down. Yeah, 16.10. In just three weeks, Freddie's gained nearly 50% of his body weight, which is great news. So he's got a bit of weight to go, but he's doing... I'm absolutely over the moon with his progress, and he's doing amazing. Come on, let's go and see you back. Come on. Hello. Hi. Hi, Freddie. Hi. Handsome boy, doesn't he look fab? He's so much brighter, yeah. isn't he? He looks fab. Obviously, we've still got a little way to go, but he's put on so much weight. So just carry on feeding. Once he gets to his target weight, then we can get him a new home. Yeah. All being well, but he looks great. Really, really pleased with his progress. Come on, then, bud. I <laughs> <laughs> haven't got anything. <laughs> Come on. Right, thanks again, Beck. You're really appreciate welcome. all your help. We'll see you soon. See you later. Bye. Bye. I'm really, really happy with his weight gain. He's doing really well. Looks really promising. There were some discrepancies on his blood work uh, when we first did that due to the starvation. So in a couple of weeks' time, we'll do another weight check and recheck his bloods just to make sure that they've all come back down to normal, which hopefully they will have done. Go, 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 go Fred. Go Fred. This will be one of the most rewarding parts of my career, really, to see a dog that's been so close to the brink of death. And uh, he's gonna go on to make someone really, really lucky to have him. Just enjoying being part of a family where he's, where he's loved. I can't wait to see that day. This was an avocado injury. <laughs> I stabbed my own hand. I'm pretending it's a bite. Those avocados, vicious. <laughs> Sorry, that just gets me trying to be healthy. <laughs> I'm going to stick with chocolate. Inspector Sam Durrant is at the tail end of a late shift when she responds to a call about an injured dog. Caller has said that the dog is a white bull terrier. They don't know who owns it. There's mention of having seen the dog be hit by a car. Sounds like this dog is growling, uh, perhaps probably in pain. So yeah, you just have thoughts going through your head like, what's happened to him? Can you get near him? Is it safe to get near him? You can never really predict what you're going to get. To minimise the risk of further harm to the dog or herself, Sam calls for backup and animal welfare officer Phil Hayes meets her at the scene. Hi. How's it going? Right. Yeah, how are you? But like Sam's own injury, all is not quite as it seems. How are you? Hey, boy. Hello, gorgeous. The call we had was that he was collapsed and dying. What? Uh, Whoever's called us. Thankfully, just a few hours earlier, the bull terrier had been taken under the wing of David and his family. Just look at your little face. And this friendly chappy seems to be completely unharmed. Hello. What's your name? What's your name, eh? What's happened to you, my lovely? Are you gorgeous? He's a bit grubby, isn't he? Yes. 
Phil has found a microchip and is trying to track down the dog's owner, which leaves Sam to get to the bottom of what happened. Oh, gorgeous. So, have you got... Can you just go through sort of what you saw or what you did? Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Just but so we've got, like, a full story. Um, a homeless guy, he come in. He said, basically, there's a dog outside. So I went out there and he was out there. There was... I've got an OQ unit out there which has got some drawers and stuff like that in it. So apparently he was sleeping in there. Strangely, the dog was discovered in an old cupboard. You're a bit like the dog out of, um, Oliver. <laughs> Is he called Spot? From Oliver. Bullseye! It's Bullseye from breaking mother's art. <laughs> That's what he reminds me of. He's all grubby as well, just like him. He's Oliver, Bullseye, yeah. He's cute, isn't he? He's absolutely as good as gold. I like the name Bullseye. Maybe it'll stick. I yeah, don't hump my leg, though. I don't need that, thanks. Yeah, no! No, I'm being... No, 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 no. Could just call him Humpy. The initial information was dog was collapsed, he'd been hit by a car, was bleeding, was being aggressive. That seems to be all completely incorrect. And we have what looks like a very healthy English Bull Terrier. Was to hump my leg the entire time, but lovely. <laughs> I was worried about him being aggressive with my injury from the avocado, but, yeah, he seems to be fine. Sam artfully dodges Randy Bullseye's advances, and she's not getting lucky with his microchip either. So it might be an unregistered chip, or it might be there's just... We can't get through to particular databases, so I'm, I'm now just having a look to see if there's a dog warden to cover this area. Really, it's the responsibility of the dog warden for an uninjured, stray dog. Normally, local councils and their dog wardens will take custody of healthy strays. OK. They work until 4pm. But with the warden's office closed, Sam needs to find Bullseye a bed for the night. <laughs> is, is keeping it here overnight an option for you or not? I would say, yeah. With the family happy to put Bullseye up, he can be collected the following day. That's the number you need to ring in the morning. Yep. If there's any problems, then you need to give us a call back. No, he's, but he's as good as gold. He's, he's good. obviously quite happy and safe. But I've put a bag of dried food in there, so give him a little bit tonight and a bit in the morning. Right. Give them a call sort of as soon as you can, 8, 9 a.m., okay. and they'll come and collect him. OK, brilliant. So, see you. Go on in, then. English Bull Terriers, but they're not a really common breed, so you'd imagine someone's missing him. Um, the local dog warden might have some knowledge. Hopefully, Bullseye will be reunited with his owner soon. But for now, Sam is grateful to the Good Samaritans. The young lad was very much like, yes, we'll keep him overnight. I think he's fallen in love with him. Really sweet dog, really friendly. Got people like that that can help out. It just takes the pressure off of us. Boy. Trying to find a space in one of our hospitals will take up the space for an injured animal. If he doesn't get claimed by an owner, like we can't find the owner, he'll get home straight away. He's lovely. So. Yeah, it's great all round. I'm catching up with Sam to find out more about what to do if you see a stray. So, Sam, what should you do? What should one do if you see a dog wandering in the streets? Try and get the dog confined and then contact the dog warden for the local authority that you're in and they will deal with stray dogs. So give them a ring and they'll come and collect the dog as soon as they can. But people quite often ring you instead of ringing the council, right? Yes. Obviously, if you can't get through to them or you've got a dog that's quite badly injured and you need some immediate help, then we're going to be there to help people with that. So when, when do you get involved? When is an injury or when a dog's in real danger? Uh, well, either, really. Um, the council do deal with dogs that are sick and injured as strays as well, but we are not, we're not going to leave a dog that needs some help, so people can always ring us. Do you hear that? We have to ring the council. Don't run off. Dogs do get out, don't they? Get out yeah. of the gardens and things like that. They do, and it's really important that you keep your details updated, both on the microchip details and also on the um, tag that's on the car. Right. And we do recommend, yeah. obviously, a, a phone number as well, so people can get hold of you quite quickly. Yeah. If you've got your dog microchipped and the dog your dog runs off, mm -hmm. then what you can do is go on to... or ring the microchip company that you've used. Mm -hmm. You can notify them that you've lost your dog, and you can also, uh, at that same time, just check that all your details check are up-to-date. Phone date. number, right yeah. address. Yeah. 
And if the dog does get out, you need to notify the dog warden very quickly. Any local vets will be able to keep details for you as well. Contact your neighbours. So just try and get word out very quickly that your dog's gone missing, really, and you've got much more chance of, of finding him or her again. So Olivia here will have a chip. Yes. Should we yep. check for it? So you'd use a scanner like this. You've got a like chip this. scanner. And it'll oh. come up with a number. Also. And if you've got a German Shepherd, my advice would be don't keep it on a table. No, on the floor. On the floor. <laughs> to put you on the floor, you're not you a table eat. dog. No. <laughs> Come here, sweetheart. You're all right. Come say hello. Earlier, we met Angel. It's OK. Who had been abandoned in her home. Go on, out you go. Good dog. Good dog. She's now at Millbrook Animal Centre, but her experience may have left a lasting impression as she becomes anxious when alone. Hi, Angel. Hello. No dog should be left to fend for themselves as Angel was, but in order to be rehomed, she does need to be comfortable being by herself for short periods. Good girl, you stay there. Stay. The centre has been doing their best to help Angel, but she's proving a tough nut to crack. So certified clinical animal behaviourist Sarah Whitehead is stepping in. I think it's kind of a normal state of affairs to miss those that you love when you're not with them. The big issue is, of course, when that goes beyond this sort of normal range and then actually we're looking at a behavioural problem. To help ease her anxiety, Sarah wants to build Angel's level of independence, and a good way of doing this is by giving her a space of her own. Look, what have I got for you? While we've been in here, she's wanted to get on the sofa. So what I'd really love her to do is to settle down on, on the floor. Sarah uses a lead to help settle Angel on her bed. Yes, what a good girl. Yeah, dear girl. What a good girl. Wow. Well, So in a fairly short space of time, we have managed to get her to settle down and be calm and relaxed. But I think we would want to supercharge our training if we possibly can. And one of the ways of doing that, I have found, is with dogs that are a little bit addicted to human contact, we can't just let them go cold turkey. We have to say, we replace your addiction with something else. So I love interactive chew toys. While they think about the toy, they're not thinking about you. So, what have I got for you? Oh, my goodness. If you put food inside them, it in actually employs the dog, gives them rewards while they're chewing the toy. And then I say, look, that's for you. And then I'm out of the picture. This is about her enjoying her chew toy on her nice comfy bed. When she's really involved with it, she's got her tongue right inside, she thinks this is like Christmas. Christmas? That's not what I want for Christmas. This is the moment that I would say I can get up, walk around, maybe walk in and out of the door. So she's starting to get this association. When she has the chew toy, the human isn't around. That's the, the kind of connection we want her to make. See so if she pays any attention to where I've gone. Just perfect. I do a little pretend I might, I might nip out to the bins. Yes, I might do. I could probably even step out, step back in again. That was quick. Dog stays calm and relaxed. Well, looks like Angel's got this licked. And then because I'm coming back, I want her to understand that she only has the Kong now when no human is present. So I'm going to do a swap, because that's always a polite way of taking a toy off a dog. Especially if it's a big dog like Angel. That becomes mine again, goes back in the fridge for the next training session. What else is in the fridge? I'm not eating in your house. So in theory, after about a week, 10 days, most dogs start to say, when are you going out? Off you go, go to work. Get me my chew toy. That's what you're looking for. What it really needs now is somebody to be able to do that every day and to just increase the amount of time that she can just have that calm downtime when nothing else is happening. Um, and I think pretty much within a week she'd have this cracked. 
She really is an angel, and I think she's going to make somebody a fantastic pet. Sit. Coming up. We'll catch up with Freddy and see if he's managed to find his forever home. Come on then, bud. Earlier, emaciated Freddy was rescued by Inspector Anthony Joins. He was half the weight a border collie his size should be and was days away from death. 11.55. Four kilos heavier than your friend. Sadly, it was already too late for his friend Harvey. Just really heartbreaking because we haven't managed to save this one. A post-mortem and blood tests revealed there were no underlying health conditions affecting either dog, so their extreme weight loss was purely due to starvation. The evidence collected during Anthony's investigation was brought before the courts. So he was struggling then just to get up, wasn't he? Freddie's owners pleaded guilty to causing unnecessary suffering to both dogs. They received a 12-week suspended prison sentence, were required to attend a 30-day rehabilitation activity and were banned from keeping animals for 10 years. The owners said things had got on top of them and they were struggling to cope. And here's Freddy now. Doesn't he look fantastic? He's back to his ideal weight and he's doing very well indeed. Not only is he looking brilliant, but he's also found his forever home with Bill and Monica Nielsen. Should we meet them now? Is that a yes? Not only is Freddy up to weight, something tells me he's going to fit right into his new home. I saw Freddy, so I said to Bill, can we have him? I want to make his eyes shine again. And uh, lo and behold, we brought him home. And life has never been the same no. since. <laughs> and Freddy's been making himself very comfortable. Getting all the attention that he needs. Demands, you mean? Well, that's the one, yeah. <laughs> to lay so under the thumb. Yeah. 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 Seems Freddy's the captain of this ship and he likes keeping to a tight schedule. He'll get up and have his breakfast. He'll get us up and have yeah, his breakfast. Yeah, he gets us yes. up and has his breakfast. And he likes sardines in oil. That's for his coat. And then he has a lovely run, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, and then he has his tea at four o'clock. And um, then he goes to sleep. <laughs> Usually on one of the beds which is a terrible thing. We've never had dogs sleeping on the bag before, but Freddy does. Freddy does what he likes. Freddy was used to spending his time in a small cage, but now Monica and Bill will be expanding his horizons. So he's going to France soon on a nice big holiday. That's his identification. Our last dog filled up three passports, and we're hoping that Freddy will do the same. <laughs> But before we say bon voyage to Monsieur Freddy, it's time for a petite promenade. But well, he says, I think it's time I went out for my walk soon. <laughs> How much you got? He loves being out, yeah, yeah. He's got a load of friends, dogs, of course. Natural mo. He feels happy, he feels safe, and he just runs through till you call him. Today, Freddy's being surprised by one of his human friends. Here he is. Hi, Fred. This is Freddy. Anthony, Hi. really nice to meet you. Hi, Pleasure. You too. Hi, my friend. How are you? Hey. How do you think he looks? I think he looks spectacular. He's still really food orientated, yes, yeah? Yes, yes. Pardon you, Freddy. Yeah. He's constantly yeah. burping. He's a good burper. <laughs> Better out than here, eh? So I heard he's got his own passport now. Is that is that true? He has indeed, and he's going to France. That is amazing. Going news. visiting friends and family. It's such a pleasure to see him, honestly. Sit. The speed of him. Amazing. Happy little dog, isn't he now? Yeah. Just learning loving, to play. Just loving life, isn't he? This case, for me, was one of the saddest cases I've dealt with in, in years. A dog like that, you end up forming a real close bond that can last a lifetime. He's got a nice glossy coat. He's got a really lovely couple uh, who dote upon him. 
I just think he's landed on all four paws, really. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Get away from this dog now. Inspector Anthony Joins refuses to be intimidated as he rescues a dog with a serious skin problem. It's the closest I've come to being assaulted, I think, for quite a while. He's so worried about. Upheaval for Angel, the anxious Jack Russell, who has to find a new, less hectic home. The owner's upset, but she's doing the right thing. She's a busy lady, busy family. You just had a moment, didn't you, Taz? A really silly moment. And Hershey Bowl is called in to help an owner whose dogs have an uncharacteristic fight. You know, my job isn't just about rescuing dogs and, and, and helping them. Sometimes I end up rescuing people. <laughs> <laughs>